Horror Story The Long-Faced Bug This story was handed down to me by my late grandfather, a man who knew the true meaning of fear. Even though he's long gone, his tale still lingers in the darkest corners of my mind. I was just a youngling, obsessed with creepy crawl eyes and the mysteries they held. But my grandfather, he warned me, told me to keep my distance from certain insects. He had a story to explain his caution. And now, I'll recount it to you, as he did to me, with all the bone-chilling details intact. It was the summer of 57 when I found myself in a small forgotten town, tucked away amidst the vast forests of New England. I had just graduated, fresh-faced and eager, accompanied by your grandmother. We disembarked from the rickety bus and made our way to the mayor's office, where the town's peculiar assignments were handed out to newcomers like us. After a meager meal at the local diner, we joined a group of hard-working townsfolk to toil away in the fields. My friend, let's call him John for now. Names have been changed to protect the living and the dead, and I formed a partnership and staked our claim on a patch of land for cultivation. But there was something odd about John's choice. He insisted on working in the lowest, most shadowed area, where the sunlight struggled to penetrate. I questioned his decision, but he brushed it off. His eyes glazed with an unnatural fervor. As the sun sank below the horizon, painting the sky with streaks of crimson, we packed up our tools and prepared to retreat. I called out to John, inviting him to join me for dinner, but he remained engrossed in his work, as if possessed. An eerie silence clung to the air, and I, growing uneasy, approached him cautiously. I tapped his shoulder, and he jolted back to reality, beads of sweat glistening on his forehead. He claimed not to be tired, oblivious to the fact that he had been lost in a waking nightmare. I brushed it off as exhaustion and thought no more of it. That night, he ate his meal in silence, his eyes glazed over, and retired to bed early. Little did I know, the true horror was just beginning. The following morning, before the break of dawn, I awoke to find John already dressed and ready, his tools in hand. I called out to him, urging him to rest, but he didn't acknowledge me. Curiosity mingled with concern, and I quickly dressed and followed in his footsteps. What I witnessed out there, on that cursed patch of land, would haunt me till my dying breath. John, along with a procession of townsfolk, marched in a trance-like state, their footsteps synchronized, as if they were mere marionettes dancing to a sinister tune. I called out to John, my voice ricocheting off the eerie silence, but it was as if I were screaming into the void. He didn't respond, his eyes vacant, locked in an unholy communion with the earth beneath his feet. Desperation gnawed at my core, urging me to intervene. I grabbed hold of him, tugging with all my might, but he remained motionless, unresponsive. It was then, as I pulled with all my might, that his clothes gave way, tearing apart like fragile tissue paper. And what I saw next, dear reader, would forever scar my soul. From beneath the torn fabric, grotesque faces emerged, twisted visages of suffering and torment, faces that shouldn't have been there, faces that belonged to the shadows. They stared at me, their eyes devoid of light, their mouths stretched wide with silent screams. I stumbled back, horror consuming me, as the faces dissolved into wisps of smoke, vanishing into thin air. The townsfolk, now free from their trance, collapsed to the ground, bewildered and disoriented. The spell had been broken, but the scars remained. I rushed to John's side, cradling him in my arms, and he slowly regained consciousness, confusion etched across his face. He had no recollection of what had transpired, no memory of the macabre faces that had engulfed him. We returned to the town, shaken and changed, but the incident remained buried, a secret shared only by the haunted few who had witnessed it. Years passed, and I never spoke of that fateful day, but the horror that had unfolded in that forgotten New England town never left me. It was as if an invisible mark had been etched onto my very soul, a reminder that there are things in this world that defy explanation, that lurk in the darkest corners of our reality. And so, my friend, 
that concludes the tale my grandfather passed down to me, a tale of unearthly faces and the terrors that lie beneath the surface. Whether it was a trick of the mind, an otherworldly force, or a glimpse into the true nature of our existence, I may never know. But one thing's for certain, in the deepest recesses of my mind, I can still hear the whispers of those long-faced bugs, their haunting cries echoing through the corridors of my nightmares. Horror Story The Girl in the Dream It was just a few nights ago when I had a dream, a dream that crawled out from the darkest corners of the underworld. As I woke up, drenched in sweat, I couldn't shake off the eerie feeling that clung to me. With my father absent, dismissing anything out of the ordinary, I mustered the courage to share my nocturnal experience with my mother, hoping she would understand. My mother, a skeptic by nature, initially laughed it off as the product of an overactive imagination. But as I continued to recount the details of my haunting dream, her laughter faded, and a shadow of concern clouded her eyes. She decided to reveal a peculiar true tale from her own childhood, a story that resonated with my dream in unsettling ways. My mother, who we shall call Sarah to protect her identity, journeyed back to the year 1996 when she was an eighth grade student. It was a night like any other when a dream, akin to a specter, unfolded before her slumbering mind. In that dream, a girl emerged from the depths of her bedroom closet. This ethereal figure, appearing to be of the same age as my mother, possessed wild, disheveled hair and donned a tattered white garment, whose specific nature has since faded from memory. The girl's emergence from the confines of a closet, a gateway to another realm, sent shivers down my mother's spine. Yet the girl, whom she later recalled as Lily Anderson, offered reassurance in a voice that carried a whisper of the beyond. Fear not, for I mean no harm. I am but a lingering spirit, trapped between worlds. She spoke with a haunting grace. Lily disclosed her tragic fate, deprived of a mother's love from an early age, destined to wander the realms of the deceased alongside her departed father. The circumstances of her demise, my mother learned, were rooted in a fatal car accident that claimed both her and her father's lives. Taking my mother's hand in a spectral grip, Lily proposed a peculiar invitation to venture outside and engage in ghostly play. My mother, her fear eclipsed by curiosity, acquiesced, joining Lily in a dance between life and death. In an inexplicable twist, their steps carried them beyond the threshold of their own home. The familiar walls melted away, replaced by a sprawling outdoor expanse. My mother's gaze fell upon a sign that proclaimed Central Park, an iconic locale far removed from their Californian abode. How such a transformation occurred, defying the boundaries of geography and reason, remained a mystery. Lily, claiming this ethereal Central Park as her dwelling, insisted it was her home, regardless of the distance that separated it from their physical reality. And with that realization, my mother's dream faded, dissipating like a wisp of smoke, only to awaken to the tangible light of day. Initially, my mother dismissed the dream as a mere figment of her imagination, a creation of her subconscious mind. But the following night, the same ghostly apparition materialized once more within the confines of her slumber. This time, Lily emerged from a long-forgotten storage room nestled in the recesses of their backyard. Fear gripped my mother's heart as the spectral girl sought refuge in the sanctuary of her room, whispering of a father's presence lurking outside, desperately calling out her name. A voice resonating with sorrow and longing drifted on the wind, only to fade away as abruptly as it had appeared. With Lily's father vanishing into the night, she confessed to my mother, though I may no longer join you in play, I implore you to write to me. Send your words, your thoughts, and your dreams through the ethereal realms. Lily entrusted my mother with an address, now lost in the annals of time, instructing her to burn the letters with the address, promising they would find their way to her restless spirit. And just like that, the dream dissolved, leaving my mother alone in the wake of her nocturnal encounter.
The specter's friendly disposition tempted my mother to pen a missive, a letter that would bridge the gap between the living and the dead. Yet, she hesitated, fearing the consequences of igniting the written word within the confines of her earthly home. The specter's call persisted, weaving its tendrils into the fabric of my mother's consciousness. And then, on the third night, a malevolent presence cast its dark shadow upon her restless mind. Sleep eluded her as the clock's hands, a luminous white timepiece reminiscent of her mother's jaunt to the glimmering abyss of Las Vegas, pointed to the hour of 3.33 m. In that witching hour, a whisper slithered into her ear, chilling her to the bone. Why did you not heed my call? Why did you not write the letter? The voice, neither alive nor dead, dissolved into the night, leaving my mother paralyzed with fear. The room turned frigid, the air heavy with the weight of the supernatural. Frenzied, she bathed the room in an incandescent glow, determined to ward off the encroaching darkness, vowing to stay vigilant until the dawn's light swallowed the lingering specter. From that fateful night forward, my mother never again found herself entangled in Lily Anderson's enigmatic dreamscape, yet the memory of those otherworldly encounters persisted, an indelible stain upon her consciousness. Years passed, and my mother matured, venturing far from the familiarity of her childhood home. Driven by an insatiable curiosity, she embarked on a quest for answers, seeking solace in the realms of research and inquiry. But the name Lily Anderson, forever etched into her mind, yielded no traces of a young girl's tragic demise in any earthly records. Though the truth eluded her grasp, my mother could never quite shake the lingering sense of the supernatural. The tale of Lily Anderson, forever shrouded in mystery, remained etched in her psyche, an enigmatic encounter that defied reason and logic. Perhaps it was not, but a series of vivid dreams, a mere dalliance with the unknown. Or perhaps, just perhaps, it was a glimpse into a realm beyond our comprehension, a haunting reminder that even our dreams can harbor secrets and mysteries that defy explanation. To this day, my mother remains captivated by the enigma of Lily Anderson and the ethereal realm she briefly inhabited, a testament to the inexorable power of the unseen. And so, dear reader, I have shared with you the chilling tale of the girl in the dream, as recounted by my mother Sarah. It is a story that has clung to her consciousness, a specter that lingers in the corners of her mind. It serves as a reminder that there are forces at play beyond our comprehension, unseen worlds that intermingle with our own. Whether you believe it to be a mere illusion of the mind or a glimpse into something far more profound, the choice rests with you. But remember, when you close your eyes at night, be wary of the dreams that may come knocking, for within their depths, lies the potential for wonders and terrors beyond imagination.